What's up, peeps? Today, you're gonna get to see how I made most of the staging props for the final shots of my Halloween challenge dresser video. If you missed that video, I'll link it below. That transformation was basically epic, and you should totally check it out. I painted up these faux candles in the full-length video, so enough of this clip, let's just get into all of the other spooky staging props. Well, I guess I can share the final look of the candles before moving on. I used this Americana craft acrylic in the color tan and gave two coats to the outside and then one coat on the inside of all of these candles. And I made sure to jam the brush down into all the nooks of the hot glue to get everything coated. I'm not going for permanence with any of these props, plus I want them heavily weathered anyway, so I don't have to fully remove goo. I'm also not concerned with scuffing the surface because again, this is one of those times where the props literally only have to get me through the beauty shots but I at least wanted that to come out good, so I washed the lid for one of the jars with a scrubbing pad. That gave a tiny bit of tooth, and it removed anything on the surface. With that dry, I could get started on paint. With the lid dry, I started with that jar. First, the liquid inside, it's just one of the green wash colors that I used on the challenge piece. I shook it to coat the inside of the glass, then with my folk art copper chalk style paint and a fitch brush, I coated the lid by stippling. Then I took the second bottle out to the garage to give it a quick wash down too, but I definitely wasn't trying for perfection here. I want that one to have a real deep purple liquid, so I used Hello Hobby chalk paint in Ruby and Nautical to create a nice purple. I added liquid with a spray bottle to the bottle so that it would mix the paint. Shook it up, then capped and painted the cap copper. I also used copper paint to coat the other three bottles as well as the lid from the short container. And I went in right away doing patina. I used the same green wash, added a touch of blue, and then stippled it on the surface of everything very randomly. I went back and forth from green to copper until I was happy with the look of the patina. Again, I used that tan craft acrylic to coat the short jar's base. Then I gave a brown and a black wash to those two jars with the liquid inside. That further aged those. And finally, using the washes, I added a wood grain effect to the short jar base, and I left everything to dry. I wanted a few more accessories, so I picked up this cheap plastic cauldron that I want to turn into believable looking cast iron, so I started by scuff sanding it with a 120 grit, wiped the dust, then I used the same copper paint to stipple on a solid but kind of broken coat of the copper. Then I went in right away with a solid coat of matte black craft acrylic. I applied it using a damp sea sponge so it would mix in with the copper and really create a nice solid look. Then I left everything to dry. With everything that had patina, I wanted to make sure it got protected, so I used one coat of general finishes, flat out flat, and then again left everything to dry. I wanted to add some labels to the jars, so I used craft paper that I coated with flat varnish. Then I added various aging and weathering techniques, using craft paints and some dark stain around the edge. 
I used the same sea sponge that I washed to add the different layers of grunge and a brush just to add some decorative touches. Then I attached them using another coat of varnish and I did it like I was doing decoupage. So if you know me, then you know I love a good pun. Or I guess in this case, more like an Easter egg. Uh, yeah, any BBD fans in the house? But I couldn't let the p, p poison jar be the only star of this show. <laughs> so this is what happened. I used some paint pens to do this, but I don't even think this kind is available anymore. If they are though, I'll link them below if you want to check them out. The last thing I had to do was add one final wash of patina and grungy, grimy swampiness to everything. That way I could blend the labels into the rest of the bottle and I would get that full bog witch vibe that I was going for. I added black and brown washes just until it felt right. Then all I had to do was set the stage. Thanks for hanging out today to see how I made most of the staging props for my Halloween challenge piece. I really hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes look at how I brought everything together for that video. And like I said, if you haven't seen that video yet, check the link in the description and I'll also leave it at the end of this video. Don't forget to subscribe before you go, that way you won't miss any of my future videos. But that's all I've got for you today. Thanks so much for being here and watching. Later, peeps. I painted up these faux candles in the faux... Oh, not in the faux length video. Oh my god. Okay, dropped it. Dropped it. Of course I did. Oh my god.